Hello, Divination, and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make hidden row content appear on Hover with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. Okay, so let's start by creating a brand new page. So I'm going to come over here to Pages, click on Add New. I'm just going to call this page My Tutorial. Click on Use Divi Builder. So here you can use this technique that I'm going to be showing you today on an existing page or on a brand new page. But in this example, I'm going to do it on a brand new page. So I'm going to click here on build from scratch. I'm going to close this for now and then add a background color to our section. So I'm going to come over here to the top to this gear icon to access my section settings. Click on background, click this plus button and then add the color. Now, if you want to use the exact same colors I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. Okay, so now that we've added our background color, we might as well add our hover color. So to do that, I'm going to come over here and click this little arrow, click on the hover tab, and then I'm going to add my color here. So now when I cycle between these two, you can see that this is going to be our hover state. Next, we're going to add our margin. So I'm going to come over here to design, spacing, and for the top margin, we're going to add 5VW. And we're going to do the same for the bottom. And a quick tip here is to use this chain icon. So if you activate it, it's going to add the same value to the bottom as well. Let's head over here to the margins, to the left margin. So I'm going to add here, same value, 3VW. It's going to be on the right as well. So I've just activated my chain. And as you can see, it's applied to both sides. Now over here on the padding, the padding on the top is going to be zero pixels. So I'm going to activate my chain again because the same value needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom. Right, so we're done for now. I'm going to go ahead now and save. Okay, so the next stage is to add my columns. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to add a new row and I need two columns. So I'm going to select my two columns here and I'm just going to close this for now. Next, I'm going to come over here to my row settings click on background and we're going to start by adding our gradient background. So I'm going to click here on the second tab, click this plus button and add my first color. Paste my color in here, click on the second one. Now my second color is going to be a full transparency. So to add that, I'm just going to select white and then drag the slider all the way down to the bottom. So now that is full transparency. Next, we're going to come over here to the gradient type. By default, it's set to linear. So we want radial. So I'm going to select it. Direction is going to be center and the start and end position is going to be 15%. Next, let's define our row size. So I'm going to come over here to design sizing. We're going to make this row full width. And we're going to set our gutter width to one. Right, so the next stage is to add our padding. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. So for the top padding, I'm going to add 9VW and this needs to be applied both to the top and the bottom. And then over here on column one, left and right, we're going to set this to 5VW. And we're going to do the same for column two, custom padding as well. Left and right, 5VW. Okay, and then we're going to save. Right, so the next stage now is to add our text module. So I'm going to come over here, click this plus button, search for my text module. I'm going to select it. And we're going to add some content. So first of all, I'm going to add some text here called branding. Then I'm also going to add a link which says view portfolio. Right, so over here on branding, we're going to set this to heading three and view portfolio. Let's correct the spelling here. I'm going to highlight it and make this a link. So I'm going to come over here to this chain, click on it. And for now, I'm going to add a blank URL. Click on OK. So now we have the word branding and also a link on view portfolio. So in your case, you would need to add a link that goes to the portfolio page. Now let's stylize our text. So I'm going to come over here to design. So I'm going to start with the link settings. I'm going to click here on this little brush tool. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to add a font to this. So I'm going to click here on default. And the font we're going to use is called Didact Gothic. Underline it. So the text size here is going to be 20. And the link text color is going to be white. Now let's work on the heading. So I'm gonna, again, I'm going to come over here and just mouse over the word. And once this brush shows up, I'm going to click on it. And then I'm going to click here on heading three font, didact gothic. And we're going to change the size from 22 to 50 pixels. And then finally, we're going to set our color to white. We need to come over here to advanced. And finally, we want this to be disabled on the desktop. So I'm going to come over here and activate desktop. So 
this is only going to be visible on the phone and the tablet. And then let's go ahead and save. So the next thing we're going to do here is to add a divider. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my divider module, select it. And we're going to change the color. So I'm going to come over here to design color. We're going to set this to white. Next, I'm going to come over here to spacing. And we're going to set our top margin to 11 VW. And while we're here, we might as well add our settings for the tablet and mobile device. So I'm going to click here on this little icon. And on the tablet, we are going to set this to 80 pixels. And that's also going to be the same for the smartphone. Okay, so I'm going to head over back here to the desktop. Now for the margin, again, we're going to add a margin of 50 pixels, and this is only going to be on the tablet and the phone. So I'm going to add my 50 pixels here and do the same for the phone. Okay, so that's all we need to do for now. So we're going to go ahead and save. But before I do that, I just need to switch over back here to the desktop mode. Click on save. And then over here to the right, we also need to add a text module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my text module, select it. And over here, you can add any text you want. So I'm just going to type a bunch of text. Okay, so that's the text I'm going to use. I'm going to highlight it and set this to heading four. Now let's go ahead and stylize this text. So I'm going to click here on design. I'm going to mouse over this area here and click on this brush tool. And that's going to take me straight to my settings for heading four. Now here, I'm going to click on this drop down and choose didact gothic. My font weight is going to be set to bold. The color needs to be white. So for our text size, over here on the desktop, we're going to set this to 2VW. And then we're also going to set our sizes for our tablet and smartphone. So I'm going to click here on this little icon, click on tablet. And our size for the tablet is going to be 40 pixels. And then on the phone, it's going to be, it's going to be 30. So that's all we need to do for now. I'm just going to head over here back to the desktop and then save this. Next, we're going to add another text module below this. So I'm going to click here on this plus button, search for my text module and select it. So this is the default text I'm going to use for this. So all I have to do now is to go to the text setting. So I'm going to click here on design text, set this to white. And I'm also going to change my font from the default to didact gothic. Now it's time to add the sizes. So I'm going to come over here to text size. I'm going to set it to 0.9 VW. And I'm also going to set my sizes for the tablet and the phone. So I'm going to click this little icon, go to the tablet tab, and we're going to set this to 18 pixels. And that's going to be the same on the phone as well. So the next thing we're going to do here is to add a line height. So I'm going to come all the way down here and just set this to two. So the next thing we need to do is to add some margins just to give this a bit of uh, breathing space. So I'm going to come over here to spacing. And for our top margin, we're going to set it to two VW. And we're also going to add a right margin. And this is going to be 15 VW. So that's all we need to do for now. I'm going to go ahead now and save. So the next stage is to add another row. So I'm going to click on this plus button. And this time it's going to be a single column. So I'm going to select that. So let's close this for now because uh, we need to add our sizes for our row. So I'm going to click here on this row settings. Design, sizing. We're going to make this full width. Use custom cutter width. I'm going to say yes, and then set this to one as we did before. So the next stage now is to remove any padding on this row. So I'm going to click here on spacing and add zero to the top and the bottom. So I'm going to activate my chain just like that. So now let's set our visibility. So on the previous one, we disabled the desktop. So this time we want to come over here and make sure that we disable the phone and the tablet. So I'm going to select phone and tablet. So that means this row is only going to show on the desktop. So now I can go ahead and save. So what I need to do now is to add a text module onto this column. Because the text that I'm going to use is going to be similar to what I have here, I'm just going to copy and paste it. So I'm going to hit Control C to copy and Control V to paste. So you can see my text is in here. Now I'm going to go in and make my adjustments. So the first thing I'm going to do here is to go into the module settings and click on advanced visibility and make sure you disable desktop. Right, so back over here. So let's add a background color to our text module. So I'm gonna click here on background, click this plus button and add my background color. And while we're here, we're also going to add a hover state. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow, click on hover and on our hover state, we are going to add a full transparency. So I'm gonna click here on white and drag this all the way down. 
Okay, so let's just test this and make sure it's working. So that is working fine. So for now, let's go ahead and save. So what we need to do next is to come over here to the link font. So I'm gonna click here on my text settings, design. And this is gonna take me directly to my settings for my links. So the first thing I'm gonna do here is to set my text size to zero. So I'm gonna come all the way down here, set this to zero pixels. And on the letter spacing, I'm gonna set this to minus one. So the next thing we need to do here is to set our hover link size. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow, click on hover, and I'm gonna set the size to 1.7 VW. Now let's work on our heading text. So I'm gonna hover over here and click on this brush tool. And the first thing we're gonna do is to set our size. So my heading size here is going to be 12 VW. Our color is going to be black. So I'm gonna select my black. And my letter spacing is going to be minus eight VW. So now let's add, let's add our hover states. So I'm gonna click here on this arrow, click on the hover, and for our color, here on hover, it's going to be white. So I'm gonna choose white. So that, those are gonna be our states. Right, so moving on, for our text size, we are going to set our hover text size to 4VW. And over here on the letter spacing, we're gonna set this to minus 0 0.2. Now there's something that I forgot to do here uh, for our for our font weight, this needs to be set to bold, so I might as well just um, change that now. Okay, so that's looking much better now. Now let's work on our margins. So I'm gonna start with the top margin and then add my bottom margin. So, so I'm gonna scroll down here to spacing, add my top margin, and this is going to be minus 34.1. My bottom margin is gonna be minus five VW. Now let's add our top and bottom padding. So I'm gonna add 12 VW, both to the top and the bottom. Next, I'm gonna add my left padding. So here, we're gonna add 11.5 VW. And then on the advanced tab, we need to add our transition duration, which is going to be 400 milliseconds. Okay, so by default, it's set to, set to 300. So I'm just gonna add my 400 here, and then save. Okay, so that's looking great so far. So the next stage now is just to clone this section. So I'm gonna go ahead now and click on this button here to clone it. So for this example, let's start by adding a different hover background color. So I'm gonna go on the bottom one here that we've just cloned, click here on this uh, gear icon, click on background, and then I'm gonna click on the hover tab and add my color. Okay, so for that, I'm gonna go and save, click here on my row settings, background. So over here on the gradient uh, background, on color one, I'm gonna change this to black select my black here. So I'm gonna save this for now. And then next I'm gonna change my colors here for this, uh, for my text modules. So I am going to click here on my settings, click on design. In fact, I might as well just click here on this um, brush tool. And then I'm gonna add my color, paste it here. And if we need to, we can actually go in and change the wording. So the top one there is called branding. So this one can be called web design. Now let's head over to the spacing and over here on the left, we're gonna add minus 21 VW and for the left and right here, we're gonna set this to 10. So let's do a quick preview and see if this works now. So I'm gonna click here on save changes, I'm gonna save the page, exit the visual builder. Right, so when I hover now, you can see all my content is now being revealed, which is fantastic. Let's move on to the next one. And the color here is also different. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified when we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.